home? Yes. Yes? yes. Are we all excited to go home? Yes. Okay. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Let us sing a song that will cheer us on the Sorry, Bruce, are you putting it on the screen? Let us sing a song that will cheer us on the Have you got hymn books? <laughs> I'm not doing solo today. <laughs> it's 626. See, that's why we need hymn books, you see. We can't always depend on technology. <laughs> okay, that's it. From the screen. Okay. Let us sing a song that will cheer us on the way. In a little while we go. Else got a favourite?
Thank you, Brother Molly. Okay, if we can all rise, please, for the intro. If we can all rise, please, for the intro. Father, your children are here to worship. We invite you to fill this room with your spirit, that we may also be filled. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath Zoomers, I know we can't quite see you there, but a big welcome and a happy Sabbath to you. What a wonderful day. So uh, welcome each and every one of you. It's nice to see the church actually bums on seats, which is fantastic, great. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a great day and I want everybody to be spirit filled. So uh, our visitors, we, we thank you for taking the time uh, to come uh, here and uh, you know worship with us today. So we hope you are, are fully uh, blessed by the end of the day and your Sabbath will be a, a blessing not just to you, but to others as well. So uh, I will thank you uh, for joining us here today. And we're just going to hand over to a young man now, uh, Daniel, and he has a, a special item for us. Happy Sabbath, church. I'd just like to introduce my instrumental, which will be As the Deer Panteth. I'd just like to contemplate on the words, As the Deer Panteth, for the water, so my soul panteth for you. May our souls have a thirst for the word of God.
Thanks for that, Daniel. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Lovely playing. Amen. Let's hear another big amen for our young man. Amen. amen. Our uh, opening hymn, guys, is going to be hymn uh, 34, Wake the Song. So if you, in fine fettle, we shall uh, rise to sing hymn 34, Wake the Song. time for the tithes and offering if you could uh, uh, be prepared to um, give there uh, graciously and, and uh, the Lord has uh, blessed you so if you can wherever possible we see that uh, we have on screen the various methods of being able to contribute your tithes and offerings um, I know each week we, we announce this. We've got uh, your, the bank accounts there that you can pay directly into. Uh, so we ask the deacons, uh, if you can, uh, come forward to take the tithes and offering. That would be wonderful. Thank you.
Let us pray. Thank you, dear Father, for this offering and tithes which have been uh, brought back into your storehouse. We ask and we pray that uh, the, those monies will be uh, to good use and it will go to further forward your work, not just in our church, but uh, further afield. We pray all these things in your dear and precious name. Amen. It is now time for the children's story. So, any children in the, in the church today, if you can come forward, that would be great. It's going to be taken uh, by, uh, by Sam, Elder Sam. So, Jesus loved the little children. So, Jesus loved the little children, all the children of the world. They are. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, little children. Happy Sabbath, yes. Today we're going to talk about something, a story in the Bible. It's an amazing story, and it's about the Israelites. But first, I want to ask you, how many... Now, I have to think about my question. <laughs> okay, so this morning you read the Bible... What's your name? Pretty. 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 Thank you for reading the Bible. Um, it is good to learn how to read the Bible. So when you guys are able, try to start reading the Bible as Pretty did this morning, because it is very important. Now, what we're going to talk about today is about how much do you think God loves us as children? I'm also a child. How much do you think God loves us? And to understand this, we're going to go back into the Bible, into the time of the Israelites. And this is a story that is told in Joshua chapter 10. Now, there's some kings, about five of them, who have seen that Israel is winning. And as they're winning, they decided to come and fight Israel. Now, during the time of the fight, something magnificent happened. Who likes it when the sun is out? You like it when the sun is out, yeah? Because it's, it's nice. It's a nice day. You can go out. You can play with your friends. You can do all sorts when the sun is out. But when there is no sun, it's cold, isn't it? And it's not so fun outside. So what happened when there were fighting was that they realized that the sun was going to go down so the sun was about to set and they were not going to finish what they were supposed to do what they were being ordered to do so their leader who was Joshua he cried unto the Lord that he should allow the sun to stay there and what do you think happened what do you think happened? What do you think happened after Joshua prayed? What do you think happened? The sun stood there. And so for a whole day, the sun was up. There was no night until they finished fighting. Now, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because God can disrupt nature if it is a in the best interest of his children. That is how much God loves his children. God loves us so much that he can let the sun stand still. And so, as you're growing up, as you're coming to church, as you're going to school, I want you to always remember that God loves you. And if it, had, it comes to him stopping the sun from setting so that your happiness or your satisfaction or 
for you to be whole or for you to be saved, God is ready to do it for you. Are you happy that God will let the sun stand still for you? Are you happy? Are you happy about that? Okay. Then we're going to say a word of prayer. Who wants to pray for us? Pretty. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for blessing us and guarding us. Bless us and bless us to pray with you and be with you. Amen. Lord, we continue praying for all the children in this church and those who are also on Zoom. The Lord, in this day, bless them and draw them closer to you as you said that we should allow the children to come to you. And so, Lord, today we offer them to you. Bless them. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Sabbath Church. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading comes from Mark 5, verse 28. May we turn our Bibles to that verse. And it reads, For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church, once again. So now it's time for the main prayer. So I'd just like to invite us, where possible, to take a reverent posture as we seek our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Father God in heaven, Lord, we are grateful that you have spared our lives to see another day. Another Sabbath day, Father, which is a day that you have given unto us as a gift. Lord, as we come before your presence now, we ask for the healing of your Holy Spirit to fall upon your people and the hearers online listening, Father, to this cry. There is nothing good within me, Father, unless your Holy Spirit resides within me and within your congregation. So help us, Father, to continuously recognize our need of the Holy Spirit. For when you was on this earth, Lord, you was always in close communion with your heavenly Father and always asking for the Holy Spirit. You never did anything according to your own will, but that of the Holy Spirit's guidance and your Father's guidance through his holy words. Dear Jesus, it's been a trying week for many of us. We go through a lot these five, six days, Father. And this is a time where you ask us to leave the cares of the world outside and to come into this place where we are able to magnify your name and give you the praise for keeping us safe and keeping us out of danger that is fully and constantly trying to draw people away from you. Lord, now at this moment, I just want to pray a special prayer on a student that used to attend here, Ryan. His father is not well at this present moment of time. Also, our own pastor who has recently had a surgery also, and many other various members that would normally be in your sanctuary that are going through health conditions. Please help them, dear Jesus, at this moment of time. Place your healing hands upon them. Help them to rest assured in your promises, Lord, that you are able to do the things that humanity is not able to do for themselves. And as the scripture rightly put it, Lord, the woman said, if only she could touch the hem of your garment, she knew she would be healed. 
And we're coming to you, Father, because we too might not have physical problems, but our heart is a real issue. And if we don't give our hearts to you, Lord, we don't know what we may become. So please help us to see that we need you to change our hearts. I go back to the participants, Lord. Please continue to help them to trust and to claim your promises, even though their bodies are going through a physical battle. And in closing, Lord, we thank you that you have not left your children to figure things out for themselves, but that you have sent Jesus Christ and your Holy Spirit to lead us, to draw us back to you. It is you that reconciles your people unto yourself. So help us, Father, to want to be obedient to that. And in closing, I pray that you touch Samuel, as he will be sharing the message of life for us through your holy words. Cleanse him and cleanse us, Father, through your words. For you said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. So may your words clean us up in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So at this time, we're going to sing the second hymn, which is 260, Hover Over Me, Holy Spirit. So I'd, just, I'd like to invite the congregation to please rise as we sing hymn 260.
Okay, um, beautiful hymn selection, by the way, Sam. Definitely. Fill me now. And I can see that you are filled with the Spirit wanting to preach. Just a tad little bit early, but don't worry, your time is fast approaching. So just before Sam does share the, the word of truth with us, I'm just here just to share a short story. So this story is on the theme of character building. So it's about a man from an Eastern European country. And he was an elder. And he went to a neighboring village to do some church work. And whilst he was out in this other neighboring village doing his church missionary work, he heard news that danger had broken out in the area where he was actually from. And the people he was with could see the agony on his face. And he said he needs to go back to his neighboring village. And they said, you can't. It's dangerous there right now. You can't go back. And he said, but I have to. Even if it's dangerous, I have to because my family is there. And I need to be where my, where my family is. And they, were, they could understand his frustration and could understand his need to want to go. But they were highly concerned that he shouldn't go. But anyway, the gentleman went, nevertheless, to be where his family was. And unfortunately, when he got there, there was a load of gunmen. And to cut the story short, his life was actually taken. His wife took this news very badly. Her husband was a good man. He was an elder in the church, and she couldn't understand why God would do this to her family. After a period of time, she left the church. It took about a year or so for her to be able to kind of get herself together, and her husband's things were still in the house. And so, like I said, after a year passed by, she thought it's time to go through the belongings and to kind of clear up so she could help overcome the tragedy that happened. So she got his things together, and she came across a particular coat that her husband used to wear when going out on walks. So as women do, she was checking his pockets to make sure that there was nothing in there. And lo and behold, she actually found something in one of the pockets. But this thing, what she found was a diary, but it was hidden in like a secretary part in the coat. So you wouldn't think that it was there. So she found it anyway in one of the secret, secret compartments. And like I said, she realized that when she found the thing, she realized it was a diary. So she began to read the diary. And there was references recorded within this diary where the elder would venture to on walks and the prayers he would pray to God are written or recorded in this diary. And as she came across an entry just before the day he died, it claimed, Lord, Please take me when I am closest to you, and the closer I am ever going to be, and the closest I am ever going to be to you, then that is the time I would like you to take me. And whenever that is, but Lord, I am trying to have, sorry, I'm trying to get the victory over this besetting sin. So that was one of the, the recordings that she came across. And then as she continued to read, she found another one and it wrote, Lord, thank you for giving me victory over this besetting sin. I have been trying over all these years and at last I have gained the victory. I am the closest to you I have ever been in my life. And like I said, unfortunately, the day after he would have passed away. And when the wife read this, sorry, uh, there was another recording, sorry, in the, in the book, and it read, oh, sorry, when she read it, it said in the diary that when he would go on these walks, he would go into the center of some field somewhere and crouch down in the middle and would smoke his cigarettes. And you know, sorry, and as we know, he was the elder of the church. He would also carry with him some cloves of garlic so that this would mask the smell of the smoke. 
and he would go home and his wife never knew that he actually was struggling with this problem. And when the wife realized as she put these, these articles or these stories together, she would have broke down because she was angry before with God for allowing her husband to be taken away from her. But she didn't know what her husband was actually going through all this time with this, this sin problem that he actually had. And like it was saying in the, in the article, he was an elder, so you wouldn't expect this from an elder. And yeah, so you wouldn't expect this from an elder, but as she, sorry, I find it a bit emotional because I think it's such a, it's such a hard and it's such a real story because sometimes we look at people and you just don't know what people are actually going through, but it just shows that God does not give up on his people and whatever situations or struggles someone is really going through, God is actually there to give them the strength so that they don't have to be a victim or a slave to the thing that is keeping them separated from God. Amen. So just in closing, we know, well, she knew death is a hard thing and the grieving process is a tough one. But let us continue to remain to trust in God because God's timing is better than what we actually understand. At that present moment, the wife couldn't understand why her husband was taken away from her. But as it said, he was the closest to God at that point when he gained the victory over the sin that he was struggling for so long that God knew it was the right time for him to go to sleep. And when she realized and she understood this, she also too was able to let go of the the hurt that she had been experiencing of not understanding why God had permitted her husband to be taken away from her. So, the Lord knows what is best for us. And sometimes he will put certain people to rest at times when we don't understand or at times when we don't actually agree with. But I'm here to encourage us that God's way is the best way and that God is always looking out for his children. He is not a cruel God, he is a just God. So when people question, why is this happening to me? Or why did this happen? Let us remember that God is seated on the throne, desiring for all humanity to be saved of those that want to be saved. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I want you to shout and um, sound excited to be here because I am excited to be here. And I, um, I hope we're all excited to be here. So we're going to go one more time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, thank you all for um, coming to church this Sabbath because I am very happy um, since COVID started and churches were closed. I have been online until uh, I went to Ghana in, in, in September. So in, in here, this is the first time I'm being... <laughs> I've been in the building um, since COVID started. So I'm very excited to be here. And I know that you guys have been open for a while. Um, I bring you greetings from Liverpool. They opened the church, I think, two weeks ago. Um, so they're also worshiping um, face to face. So it's exciting. I don't know how you guys feel about it, um, whether it feels strange or um, you're excited to be here, um, but it feels strange sometimes to see people without masks because before you see everyone wearing a mask. I want to take this opportunity to thank the church for inviting me um, this Sabbath and also to thank you for your support um, in September when I went to Ghana to um, have my wedding. and. 
Um, by your prayers, everything went very well, and God safely brought me back. Amen. And so I want to thank you from uh, myself and my wife. We thank you for your support and your ongoing support. Thank you very much. Today we're going to discuss something that is important in this time and I, it's my hope that we'll all learn something from it, benefit from it, be blessed by it. And so before we go into the scripture, I want us to say a word of prayer before we start reading. If you can bow your heads, we'll pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity of worship. We thank you for bringing us here as a family to learn your word, to worship with you, and to fellowship with uh, our friends and family here. Lord, we are very grateful. We pray that as we are worshiping today, you be in our midst, and let your Holy Spirit fill this room and teach us what you want us to learn this Holy Sabbath. And Lord, we pray that you bless us. Lord, we pray that you take absolute control of this service. And Lord, I know that I am just a nail on the wall, just holding your picture in place so that your people can see you today, so that your people can hear your voice today. And so Lord, I pray that speak to your children this Holy Sabbath. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Um, text was taken from Mark 5. Now, in the book of Mark, there's a story, and this story is reported in other books as well. You find it in Matthew, you find it in Luke. Um, it's very interesting how they were all reported, but I've chosen that we read from the book of Mark. And I am just going to ask does anyone have King James version of the Bible? You have King, J King James. Great. I want you to open your, your Bible to Mark 5. Um, we're going to read from 25 to 34. And I want someone else who also have New King James or other versions. Um, who, who has New King James version? or any other version of the Bible and wants to read. Okay, thank you very much. So we're going to read, we're just going to try and point out one thing um, in these readings. So we'll start by reading the King James Version. So we're reading from 25 to 34. At some point, I may tell you to, to, to stop, if that's okay. So you start from verse 25. Yes. Mark chapter 5 was from 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, verse 26, and had suffered many things of many, many things of many phys physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bittered but rather grew worse. Sorry nothing bettered but rather grew worse when she had heard of jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if i may touch but his clothes i shall be whole and straight away the f the foundation sorry the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in herself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in a press and said, Who touched my clothes? Verse 31. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll pause there, and then we'll take the reading from the other version. What version is yours, please? 
All right. Clear word. So from verse 25. 25, yes. A woman who had been menstruating almost continuously for the last 12 years was in the crowd. Over the years, she had gone to many physicians using all her life savings in the process, but without success. In fact, her condition was getting worse. When she heard about Jesus, she joined the crowd and gradually pushed her way to the front, telling herself, if I can only get close enough to reach out and touch his robe, I know I will be healed. The instant she did so, the bleeding stopped. Suddenly, she felt better and knew she had been healed. At that same moment, Jesus turned around, knowing that healing power had gone out of him. He asked, who touched my robe? The disciples said, with all these people pushing back and forth, how can you ask such a question? But Jesus looked around and saw, around and saw hiding in the crowd, the woman who had touched him. Amen. Now, if we're in a Bible study, the question I probably would ask is, um, what difference did you spot in these um, versions of the Bible? Not uh, it's, it's, not, um, it's not contradicting, so don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just um, difference of, of, of interpretation and, and sort of uh, expression. Um, but why did we read it? Now, to, um, today's uh, sermon, we're just going to look at two themes that appear in this uh, uh, verses that we've read. Two themes. And we see how we can learn from them. Now, the first one focuses on Jesus Christ. The second theme focuses on the woman who is mentioned in, this, in these verses that we've read. Now, we start with Jesus. Now, if you listen to the reading very well, you would hear that there was a woman who was suffering from bleeding for 12 years. And she has heard that Jesus was in the area. And so she wanted to get close to Jesus. Now, in this same book, this is Mark, chapter 3, verse 10, we see that there was a point where Jesus, were, Jesus was healing a lot of people. And so some of the people who were sick decided that they wanted to touch him and be healed. And this is reported somewhere else in also, also in Matthew that people who got close enough to touch him got healed. So this woman probably might have heard these stories that this man heals and maybe if I get closer to him, I will be healed. And so that's the story is, is, uh, is telling us. And then the woman gets close enough to touch Jesus, and then she got healed. Now, focusing on Jesus, Jesus then turns around and say, who touched me? Because Jesus realized that something had left him. Now, this is where the question is. So from the King James Version, what left Jesus? From the other versions, newer versions of the Bible, what left Jesus? What left Jesus? Power left Jesus. So, the question is, virtue or power? Virtue or power? We're not going to debate it. <laughs> because I think whether it's virtue or power, it's still mixed. Um, it still makes meaning, and so we can learn something from it. Um, per the original, per the original language, as I'm told, the better interpretation is power because it's rooted in dunam uh, dun dynamics, like um, where we got the word dynamite. So power is from is from is from there. So the better inter interpretation of that or translation. Um, rather, translation it is power. But the earlier um, translators thought that it is virtue, something righteous, something good came out of Jesus. And that good thing happened, went into that woman and made her problem um, vanish and her sickness healed. And so they used 
um, virtue. So whether it's virtue or power, what can we learn from this? Jesus was divine and human. And he was filled with the power to such an extent that he doesn't have to. He is God. He knew what was going to happen. He knows everything. But if you look at the scenario, he doesn't, you don't have to really go to him and ask for it. Just by being in his presence, just by being in contact with him, there's something that happens to you. Are we getting that picture? Just by coming close to Jesus, there's something that happens to you. That when you leave Jesus or after that encounter, your life will not be the same. Do we get that picture from Christ? No permission. No appointment. Now, now, if you read the entire chapter, you know that Jesus was going to someone else's house. Someone had come to Jesus and said... His daughter was sick. And Jesus was on the way going to this man's house to heal this young girl. Later, we'll find out that Jesus had to wake her up from the dead. So at this point, it's not even the the time. You know, this this woman, Jesus is is not coming to her house. He's not going to her house. So, to come to Jesus, you don't need an appointment. Are we getting that picture? You don't need the permission of the disciples, do you? You don't need anything. You just have to come. And by that contact, something happens to you. That's the first theme that focuses on Jesus. Now, I want, I want us to think about how do we relate to this? Jesus says that abide in me and I in you. So we are supposed to be one with Christ. Is that, is, is that the case? Is that true? And Jesus, Jesus wants us to be in that constant uh, communion with him so that we are one with him as he's also with the Father. Now, Acts 1 verse 8 it says that when the Spirit comes to the disciples, they're going to receive power. And, if, and when they receive the power, they will be disciples or they will be witnesses of, of, of Christ. In the whole area, they will start from Jerusalem and then they will spread out to the ends of the world. They will receive power. Now, I just want us to think, how do we relate to this whole thing happening here. Be in contact with Jesus and you changing. So, I'm just going to say that, do you think that by us being in contact with Jesus and receiving that power that comes out of him, does that help us to also imitate Christ? So that if someone else comes into contact with us, that person also receives that same power. Would you say that's true? Is that possible? That because you are in contact with Christ, you're connected with him, the people that you meet, the people that you interact with, may also be transformed because of the power that is in you. Are we, are, we, are we on the same page with this? Or we can't do that? Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we get the power from Christ in such a way that today someone new that came to church here, his life would change because of what he's seen us do, how happy we are, how we are smiling because we are in the presence of God. And whilst I'm saying that, you can smile. <laughs> so that someone knows that we're not mourning in here. 
we are actually happy. That is why we wake up this morning from our homes and decided to come here. Because we want this. And if someone comes into contact with us, seeing how excited we are about this message, how, how happy we are about this, that person will also be transformed and say, well, I see these guys. They have issues in the week, right? They have problems. It's not as if they don't have issues. They have them. Some of them are having chronic illnesses. Some of them are having issues in their, in their families, but they're here and they're still smiling. Do you think that can change someone's life? Theme number one, power or virtue came out of Jesus. If we are connected with him, that same power will dwell in us. And that same power will transform our lives. And that same power will transform the lives of all the people that we come in contact with. At this point, you can say amen. amen. If you want to. <laughs> you can say amen. amen. Now, the second theme that we want to expand on is that this woman has been bleeding for 12 years and she's tried everything. 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 You can think of all the physicians. She's used all her savings. And I would even say she's used all her resources. Because sometimes it's not just the money. When you're, when you're fighting a chronic disease, it's not, it's not, it's not the money. So many things, so many things that you're fighting, that the burden is not just in financial terms, psychologically, even with your relationship, because you probably not be able to spend much time with other people because every single day you're going to the hospital, you're going to see someone. So where is your, even your social life? So, the, so the, you should think about this 12 years of this woman in more in-depth sense, like not just spending all her money, no. Everything, her time. All, every time she's thinking about how will I be free of this. She didn't have a life until she met Jesus. For 12 years. How long is 12 years? How long is 12 years? I mean, maybe it's not too long because uh, a thousand years is like a day in the sight of the Lord, isn't it? <laughs> so 12 years probably, how many hours or minutes? How long is 12 years? How long was COVID? It's still around though. It's like it's not there. <laughs> oh my, oh. <laughs> I think I'm being confident. <laughs> I'm being confident by saying how long was COVID, but COVID is still with us. But now I think it's getting better. It's getting better, not in all areas, but hopefully we're hoping that it gets better. But for 12 months or more than 12 months, maybe one and a half years, and we thought it was very long were in the house and doing Zoom. And I don't know how many of you would agree, but Zoom kind of got to a point it got boring at some time. You know, you turn up and, mm, I don't know how many of you would agree. Maybe when church, so you want to be, you know, you don't want to say it, but I just said it. <laughs> some, it sometimes it got boring, you know. You come on, you like, ah, that feel is not there. And we felt it was so long a time. Think about 12 years. Think about 12 years. Who is 12 years here? 12 years? Daniel, you're more than 12. <laughs> 12 years is such a long time to suffer that consequences. And this woman did. But when she met Jesus, her life changed. Now, the second theme is that we may be going through a lot in our lives. 
It may be more than 12 years. It may be less than 12 years. But the thing is, sometimes you, you cannot just say 12 or one year because the pain it's causing you is enough. Even if it's, it's one hour. You can't say that it's only been six months. No, you cannot say that. Because there's a certain pain that someone is going through. And even if she, that person has gone through that pain for just a minute, that still even counts. So, think about it. There may be something going on in your life that you've been trying to get rid of. That you've been looking for answers for. Maybe more than 12 years, maybe less than 12 years. But Jesus is passing by. He's passing by. And the beautiful thing is you don't need an invitation. You just have to go, just get close to him. And you don't have to talk to him. Maybe you're shy. That's okay. That's okay because Jesus does not require you to speak to him. So shy people can also touch him. Amen. Amen. So get, just get close. No one, no one has to see you because this woman, no one saw her. It was only when Jesus asked, who has touched me? That even the disciples were, come on, come on, come on, this guy. We know you're different, but this is too different. There are too many people around here. Why are you saying who touched you? Everyone is touching you. How can you say that? And that also lets us think about the kind of touch this woman touched Jesus. Was it just a normal touch, do you think? Or this is a touch that comes from within that I am so determined that if by chance I could touch the hem of his garment. So some, you may be going through something. You have to be intentional about it when you approach Christ. Christ may be passing today. Would you want to touch him? Would you want to touch him? No one has to see you. Would you want to touch him? No permission. You don't have to ask anyone. But would you want to take that step? Do you want to, do you want to, you know, meditate in your head how you are going to do it? And say, I've heard he's passing here this afternoon, so I'm going to try my best. I know I don't have strength because I've been bleeding. And if you're losing blood, what strength do you have? If you're losing blood, how, how much strength do you have? If you've had anemia before, maybe you would understand. So this woman didn't have strength at all. So there's no excuse, is there? Is there any excuse why you should not touch Jesus? Jesus is close this afternoon. Is there an excuse you can think of? Think about the woman. She didn't have any strength. And think about it. There were so many people around Jesus, mostly men. Would you agree? Would you agree there were, the people around, men were, uh, around Jesus were mostly men? Because the 12 disciples, for one, they were there. And I'm thinking if there's a mob, men are usually stronger than women. So if they want to you know, go there, force their way in there, there will probably be more men. And think about a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years, no strength at all. She was able to make her way through to Jesus. You can make your way through to Jesus this afternoon. Would you say amen? amen. Jesus is passing this afternoon. The question is, would you touch him? This Sabbath, our message is straightforward and simple. Two themes. Two themes. Jesus has power in him. 
He has virtue in him. And when we touch him, we receive of him that power. And that power, as the, the original translation says, healing power. Right. That power. That, and so it says that the woman was healed. Now, in, in that original language, you could, you could say that the woman was saved. And so when Jesus heals, he doesn't only heal the body, but he heals the spirit as well. And so he saves you for eternity. He saves you so that you would be his. Not just take away the physical infirmity, but save you so that you have eternity. So there's power in Jesus. And if we get that connection, we receive it. But the beauty about it is that we can also share that power amongst ourselves. So that when people come into contact with us as a Christian group, they will also feel that power and would want to stay. And would want to be friends with us. And would want to be one of us. And also, if it's been 12 years and you want to get rid of something in your life, Jesus is passing. You don't need any permission. You don't need any appointment. It's not, it's not a GP appointment. Sometimes it takes 12 months to get one. Or is that less? <laughs> but you don't need that. You don't need that. You just have to walk straight to Jesus, touch his clothes, and receive that power. If someone is here today who wants to make that decision, I want you to meditate on it. Meditate on it whilst we're going to sing our closing hymn and pray. Meditate on it. Jesus is passing. Would you want to hold, would you want to just touch the hem of his garment? Whilst you're meditating on that, I want you to also think about it. You've been here. You've been with Jesus in this building, in your home. You've been reading his word. And he's promised that he'll give you power. How do you want to share that power with others? How do you want to share that power with others? And if you're not sharing that power at all, or if people come close to you, right, they come close to you, the people you interact with are not feeling any power, does it mean that you should think about your contact with Jesus? Maybe. Think about it as we sing our closing hymn. We're going to sing from um, SDH 532. 532. So the music um, department will help us sing this song and then we'll pray. I um, don't know if there's any announcements before or after. Can all rise, please? Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials in. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I know those who worry or fulfill. Protection of his child and treasure is 
is a child that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation so to trust Thy promises, O Lord, that I lose nor face sweet consolation. Offer me within Thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meet me, that to take us from our Father's hand. A moment fleeting till I reach that promised land. If there's anyone who has made a decision upon thinking about the fact that there is power in Christ, and if we come close to Him, we get that power. And not just for ourselves, but also for it to be shared to the people around us. And also that he may be passing today. All we need to do, just touch the hem of his garment. Amen. If someone has decided to touch Jesus this afternoon, I just want you to raise your hand where you stand as we all close our eyes. You don't need to know who, who made a decision. That's not your problem. It's only between that person and God. And so if that person is here today and has decided to put an end to the 12 years of suffering and has decided to touch Jesus, touch the hem of his garment. Kindly raise your hand. Just raise one hand as we pray. And as a church, we have a power that was given to us by God. That power needs to go out. That power needs to be shared within our communities with people who do not know Christ. And so, if there's that person who has also made that decision that I feel I have received power from Christ and I want to share it. I want to touch a life that through me, Jesus will change someone's life. That person can also raise his or her hand as we pray. It is not too late. Today may be the end of your 12 years. Just take that step, that bold step to touch Christ at the hem of his garment. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity you've given us today to worship, fellowship, and to praise your name and to benefit from the blessings of the Sabbath, Lord. We are very grateful. And together with all the people gathered here today, we can say, oh Lord, there is no better place we could have been other than to be in your presence this day. Amen. Lord, your words have come to us that you have power and that power you've given it to us to share with the people around us, the, to the people we encounter in our lives every day. And so Lord, we are making that 
decision to share, to touch lives. To make sure people get to know and feel you because it is so good and we're so excited to enjoy this. We want to share with others, Lord, we've made this decision. Lord, there's some of us who've also been going through some difficulties in life. Lord, not that you've not seen it. You have. And that is why you've made this day possible that we will raise our hands today and today will be the end of our 12 years. So Lord, we commit all those individuals today. There's so many things that I could mention and we'll still miss them because there's so many troubles in this world. So Lord, I cannot name them, but Lord, you know people and you know the number of hairs they have on their head. And so you know their hearts and you know what is going on in their lives. Lord, I pray that you, may you stretch forth your healing hand to touch all of us this Sabbath and heal us. And as we live here, Lord, we live here happy, with smiling faces, with happy hearts to tell the world that, yes, indeed, we've found Jesus and it's all that matters and it's all that we need and indeed, we are satisfied in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayer, for answering our prayer, and for accepting our worship this Holy Sabbath. We thank you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.